Good afternoon. My name is Ben Weisenberger. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome you to the Ally PLM Lunch Bite series. These sessions are designed to briefly explore capabilities within Solid Edge that you may not be aware of. We hold these sessions every other Thursday at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Today's topic was supposed to be on exploded views in motion, but we decided to split it into two separate sessions. So today we'll be talking about exploded views and animating them, and in two weeks we'll be talking about motion. If you have any questions during today's session, please write them down and send us uh, them in an email. Uh, exploded views can be used help to help visualize designs and expose the internal workings of machines. Solid Edge can automatically explode your assemblies using logic based on assembly constraints and default spread distance to quickly explode your designs. Some topics we'll cover in today's session include exploding assemblies automatically and manually, repositioning parts within an exploded view, moving parts within an exploded view, and then animating the exploded view, and also placing that exploded assembly in a drawing. So we'll come over here to Solid Edge. Uh, to explode your assemblies, you go under the Tools tab, and it's under the Explode Render Animate button, so we'll click that. And we're, the first command we're going to be using is the Auto Explode command. The Auto Explode command explodes assemblies based on the relationship applied between parts. And assemblies where the components are positioned using mate or axial line relationships, uh, the Explode command quickly gives you excellent results. So we're going to go ahead and click Auto Explode. We want to ensure that our top level assembly is on and click Accept. Now we have a couple options here. We can go into the Automatic Explode options. If we had sub-assemblies, which we don't in this example, we will in another example, uh, we can either choose to bind all the sub-assemblies or we can uncheck this and have all the sub-assemblies exploded as well. So we're going to uncheck this and hit OK. Now we can also have uh, the parts explode at an automatic spread distance or we can uncheck this and type in our own distance but for now we're just going to do the automatic distance. So we go ahead and hit explode. You can see that our assembly has now been exploded. Notice that display is good but the placement of the parts does not reflect how the parts would be assembled. Um, so next we'll reposition any parts not in order. Uh, a quick tip though uh, you can see our flow lines here pointing to each part. If you don't want them on, you can go up here and toggle them on and off with the flow line button. If you want them on but you don't want the terminators, the arrows at the end, you can turn those off and leave just the lines on themselves. So that's just a little quick tip there. So next we're going to do the reposition command. And to do that, we click reposition. And this air filter shouldn't be down here, it should be up here with the rest of the air filter assembly. So we'll click that. Uh, then we'll click the part that we want to place it next to up here and we can choose if we want it above or below. So for this we're going to put it up above. Uh, some other parts that we're going to quickly reposition. The piston assembly here shouldn't come out this direction, it should be up above the crankcase. So we're just going to quickly position these clicking one by one and placing them below each other. And we'll also reposition this a little. So now we have all of our parts repositioned. So let's say a part was not positioned correctly during the automatic explosion. This can occur when parts are grounded or relationships other than mate and axial align are used to position parts. The explode command allows you to manually explode one or more parts relative to the stationary reference. So first we're going to unexplode this assembly here. And by doing this, it says all of our previous work will be lost. That's OK. So we hit yes and continue. So now we're going we're to use the explode command. And we're going to choose the parts that we want to explode. So we're going to come in here, pick our bearing, and a couple other pieces here, the prop assembly. Hit accept. Next, we want to pick the part to remain stationary. So we're going to pick the crankcase as our stationary part and we have to click a face from which to explode from. So we'll pick this front face, and then we have to pick a direction, and we want to explode it in this direction. This option appears, and so we can 
choose whether we want to move the components as a unit or spread the components evenly. So f first we're just going to move them all as one unit. So we'll click OK. And we can type in a distance here. We'll do 5. So you can see we've moved that front assembly away 5 inches from the rest of it. So let's go back in and say let's, we want to move these apart evenly. So we can go back into our options, say spread components evenly. Now this order here is determined by the order we selected our parts in the first place. If so if your parts aren't in the correct order, you can always click on them and move them up and down on the list. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. We can choose our distance now. Let's make it a little smaller. And there you go. Now we have each part exploded two inches away from each other. Uh, another quick little tip here, the flow line option up here, we can move some of our flow lines around. So let's say this one, we don't like it floating out here. We can click it and reposition where we want it to point to. So we'll do it to the center of the circle. So now that looks a little better. All the flow lines are going straight down the middle. All right, the next option we're going to show you is drag component. So we're going to unexplode this. And we're going to do a quick auto explode. And we're going to finish that and reposition a few parts back to how we had it before. All right, now let's say we fit this. It doesn't fit very well on our screen because some of these parts are floating way out here. So what if we want to bring these parts in and this front prop is too far away? Well, to do that, we can go to Drag Component. And let's say we want to drag this one in. We can click on it, accept it, and we're able to move this in either linearly or we can also rotate the part. And to move it, you can pick which axis you want to move it along. We're going to do it along the X. So you left click and hold, and you can drag that part closer or farther away. So we'll move it closer and drop it there. Next, we want to move this part over, so we'll click it, accept it, we'll slide it over some. And let's say we also want to move this one up, so we can click our Z-axis, and then click and hold and pull it up. And there you can see our flow line. Now, let's say we don't like this flow line. Maybe we want to move the uh, Y direction out more. We can go back to our flow line, and we can move just that part in the middle, and we can drag it out farther. So if it was running through another part, we can always move it so it'll jog around that part. Uh, another quick little tip with our drag component. Uh, since all these were moved down together, if we click the first part, it'll select all of them that were moved down along with it. So let's say we want to move these two parts. Instead of clicking both of them, we can just click uh, this prop right here, and it'll select both parts. We can accept that and drag it a little closer then. We can also adjust this flow line once again. And there we go. Now, once you get everything where you like it, uh, we're going to save this as a display configuration to be used later on in a draft view and in an animation. You can use your configuration displays. So to do this, we'll go up under Configuration, hit Display Configurations, and hit New. And we're going to call this Explode 1. We'll hit OK and close. So now if we go up here under our display configurations, if we go back to the default, it puts the uh, assembly back together. And if we go to Explode 1, it'll show you the exploded view we just came up with. So now we're going to show you the uh, bind and unbind commands. So we'll go over here, open up a new assembly. Here we have a calculator. You can see we have a sub-assembly in here. Um, we'll go into the explode mode. You can see when you click on your sub-assemblies, you're able to bind or unbind them. And it gives you uh, information over here whether they're binded or unbinded with this little icon. So what we're going to do is auto-explode this, except our top level assembly, go into our options, and we're going to uncheck bind all sub-assemblies so that it will explode our sub-assembly as well. And we're going to do it by individual part. So we'll hit OK and explode. And so now you can see that the subassembly was uh, exploded. If we went back in and changed that option to bind all subassemblies and explode it, it puts that subassembly back together. So we can hit finish. 
the next option I'm going to show you is the remove and collapse command. Uh, let's say we want to bring these parts back onto the calculator. We can select all three of them and go up and hit the collapse, and all this does is unexplode those few parts. So then it brings them back into the calculator. Let's say you want to remove a part so you can see other parts below it, such as this body piece here. We can go up and hit remove, and it removes it. And to get it back, all you have to do is come back over here and hit the check again, and it'll come back. All right, and the next thing we're going to show you is how to animate an explosion. So we're going to explode this floor jacket and we're going to animate it. So what we're going to do is go into the explode view. We're going to auto explode this a distance of five inches. So now we have that exploded. We'll finish that. And I have this saved out as uh, display configuration already. So what we're going to do now is open the animation editor. Simply click animation editor and it opens down here. And you can see it added uh, explosion down here for us. So we can right click on it and hit edit definition. And under use explode from configuration, we can choose now that display configuration that we had before. Now there's a couple options in here. We have initial state. You can either have it start exploded and come back together, or we can have it collapsed and animate it exploding out. We can also change how fast the parts move, so we'll change this to 0.2. And you can choose whether you want the innermost parts to move first or the outermost. So we're just going to keep it at innermost. We'll hit OK. It'll come down here and do our animation for us. So now we can hit play and watch this, and you can see all of our parts coming back together and reassembling our assembly. All right, so now next thing we're going to do, maybe you couldn't see everything from this view. So what we want to do is move our camera around the assembly while it's being put back together. So we'll right click on our camera and say edit definition. And we can choose either clockwise or counterclockwise, or if you had uh, main views that you had saved already, you could use those, or an existing camera path if you had one saved down already. But we're just going to go with clockwise and hit next. Then you can go ahead and click preview, and it'll give you a quick preview of what that'll look like, the camera path. So you can see that rotating around our assembly, which is pretty cool. So if we hit finish on that, it now puts our camera down here. So if we hit play now, we should see our camera rotate around and our assembly come back together. So there, there are many other options available for creating, editing, and saving animations as movies. Uh, we're just, I just wanted to show you that uh, exploded assemblies can also be animated. And to learn more about animations, you can check out our YouTube page and watch our Lunch Bite that we did on animations, which is pretty cool. Uh, now what we're going to do is place an exploded view into a uh, draft file. So let me close the sound of this. What we're going to do is go up to File New and pick a new draft file. We're going to go to our drawing view wizard and pick our assembly that we saved that display configuration and we can now pick that display configuration from this drop down menu up here. So we'll pick our explode one and hit finish. Let's shade this in so you can see all of the parts and we'll click and place it. And there you go, you can see now our exploded assembly. We can also come in and place other views in this. So it's not just restricted to one exploded view. We can come in, let's say, put an ISO view, change the scale so it's a little bigger. So now you can get an exploded view and the assembled view of what it would look like. Now let's say you want to do, uh, do a parts list. And if you did it on the assembled version, you wouldn't be able to tell exactly each part. But with our exploded view, we can now place that parts list and place the table over here and it automatically balloons everything for us and you can tell uh, which part is which a lot easier. 
than if you could just doing it to the assembly. And like I said, you're not uh, limited to a single exploded drawing view on the drawing sheet, so you can place other exploded views, like when we exploded just that front prop, you could also put that in here just so you can see the uh, different parts to the prop. All right, to summarize, uh, we showed you how to explode assemblies and talked about what this might be used for, such as showing the internal workings of a machine. Uh, we also showed you how to reposition parts and drag them to whatever order and location you would like them in. Uh, some other topics we covered were animating the explosion, which could be used and saved down as an AVI and used for promotional or sales purposes. Uh, as always, replays of our lunch bites can be seen on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash LIPLM. Uh, we'll try to get this one up, hopefully by the end of the day or by tomorrow. Uh, some upcoming uh, dates for training classes. We have SD3 Fundamentals, uh, which is a five-day class coming up in March and April. And you can always uh, go to our website for more information on these. Uh, I want to thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this session informative. Uh, please email us any questions you may have or any ideas for future Lunch Bite topics. Our next session in two weeks will be about motion. Once again, I appreciate your time and have a great day.